Who's the Manson brothers? Who's the Manson brothers? Well, they was the baddest <laughs> mother tag team in professional wrestling. Three more days till Halloween, Halloween, Halloween. Three more days till Halloween, Silver Shamrock. It's the Manson Brothers Show, and we're here tonight. It's the one and only, the iconic yet polarizing, polarizing. version of Halloween. It has no Michael Myers, with the None. exception of him walking down some steps on the TV screen. No. Halloween 3, starring the one and only Tom Atkins. Tom Atkins. We'll be right back. And we are back. Uh, for me, this is kind of one of my top shows. Oh, me too. Yep. yep. Let's face it's it. Halloween Anytime favorite. we get a chance to homage, not only John Carpenter, but Tom Atkins. Tom Atkins. Uh, I mean, it's a good day. And, and, and oddly enough, well, let's, we'll get to Tom Atkins later. You know what I really like about uh, Tom Atkins? Tom Atkins. No, about this movie. You know, as usual, you tell. well, Carpenter, as usual, does the scoring for it. Oh, yes. And it's got a really cool oh, yes. score. <laughs> it has a great score. Yeah. Like every Carpenter movie. Yeah. But it's different, obviously, from the other it's Halloween yet. films, yeah. obviously, because it's not a Halloween movie. It's not a Halloween really, movie. Really. You know name what only. I love about this movie? Everything. Well, yes, pretty much. Uh, I'm still a little sketchy on the Stonehenge thing, but we'll get back to yeah, that a we'll little bit later. Um, I love it because there's a guy on the cast whose name is Dick Warlock. Yeah, the Seriously. famous Dick Warlock. Like, if I had to pick a name ever Warlock. that isn't, like, you know, Stone Powers or something like the that. The only thing better was a guy that was, a, he was in somebody's presidential cabinet. His name was Dick Army. Could okay. you have a better name than, what if Dick Army and Dick <laughs> Warlock had a company together. I think Dick Army would be that. like two dicks or what yeah, would you no, call it? would be Army and Warlock, which oh. would be oh. fucking awesome. Pardon my French. And they're both. They're both dicks. Dick Warlock. Dick Warlock. I mean, he was on. a stunt man. He played Michael Myers in Halloween 2. Yeah. And. Played the he, shape. He yeah. was one of the like multi-face. I mean, they all looked alike. The automatons. Right? Yeah. yeah. He played a few Some of them. Called? I don't know. That's what they're well, that's what they were based off of these old German handmade robots they used to make back in the day that were very intricate. Yeah, once I again, guess. look at the big brain on skull. I read a lot of comic books. Automatons. Read a lot of that comics. sounds like uh like it's the transporters. Transformers. Yeah, kind of like the Autobots. Yes. And the or Decepticons, the Decepticons. The GoBots. That was a uh-huh, there was uh-huh. a Transformers thing that failed. You never know what we're gonna talk about. On the Manson Brothers show. Could Did you have by? any clue, any inkling when we started talking about Halloween 3? That we would get into Transformers? Yes. I don't, I don't think so. Who but, was the big one? Optimus Prime? Yeah. Who was the big bad one? Uh, oh, shit. I don't know. we got to ask a Email. Email. Kid. Send us in. I don't know who it was. Well, let's get right to it and talk about our favorite guy. Uh, none other than Tom Tom Atkins. Atkins. So, you know what I like about Tom Atkins in this movie? Well, you know what I like about Tom Atkins in every movie? He's Tom Atkins. It, it takes him um, at least seven minutes until he gets laid by the yeah, hottest chick, a chick in the whole show. So, now, let us let let us lay this out for you, if we will, if we can. So, Tom Atkins in this movie plays a middle-aged, divorced doctor who is way too old to have kids that young. Yes. And... He's a doctor, yeah. and he's smoking and drinking at the local bar 100%, yes. in the hospital after his shift. So listen, if there's any pattern amongst Tom Atkins' movies, number one is cigarettes. <laughs> number one with a bullet is yeah. cigarettes. Number two, drinking. slightly behind, but right there is his booze. Right there. Right, and it's usually some sort of whiskey, some so, sort of brown liquor. Once again, we find <laughs> our hero, Tom Atkins literally thrust into and yeah. i mean and i say that with, with no hyperbole he, he's he's <laughs> thrust into the hero situation right yeah uh this young lady who's really young extremely attractive and really hot, has lost her father doesn't know where he is yeah 
somehow commissions him because he was the doctor that was on call. When well, he was, in. yeah. So the guy came in with the Halloween mask and then he subsequently gets killed by one of the robot guys who blows himself up in a car. But he tells everybody on the way in, they're going to kill us all. They're right. Gonna they're going to kill us, kill us all. Right? all. So yeah. armed with this mask, he does a little investigating and he winds up with this chick going to Santa Mira, California. Which also... What well, was her father that was killed? Yes. He was the guy at the beginning. Uh, we have touched on this before too, which is John Carpenter's homaging other massive song. affinity for Northern California. Right. And, and in this... Sounds. Right. And also paying uh, respect to films that came before him that yes. he really loved. In this case... Uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers from 1954, I think, directed by Don Siegel and starring Kevin McCarthy, wow. the original one. I love that movie. Uh, takes place in Santa Maria, California, as I believe the original book does by Jack Finney, Body Snatchers. Did the so, original book have Connell Cochran in it? By any it did not, and it's a shame because Connell Cochran is an awesome villain. He is a pretty great villain and he sits up there he kind of owns this whole town <clears throat> and he has a factory where he makes all these gimmicks like his uh you oh, know, magic time oh it's time for the wrestling oh i slapped the table again. that's okay sorry about that arrow on the, the head back in the day uh it's time We're back in the offices corporate office back in the day yeah that didn't work um it leads us into the wrestling term of the week which is Without question, the most ubiquitous wrestling term on the planet. I don't make if you know how much ubiquitous you can make with it, but it certainly is around a lot. The... Anyway, it's the term gimmick. And Carlos, would you like to start us off on what the term gimmick means? In so a gimmick can mean a lot of things. It could be one's look. Could be your gimmick. Your gimmick, absolutely. It could be a physical object like this here. Blake Manson Brothers Midnight Zombie Massacre Blu-ray available on Amazon.com and our website, MansonBrothers.com. Anyway. For instance, I would say, hey, Stone, or excuse me, hey, Carlos. You're skull. I'm Skull. No, I'm Skull. That totally Show him the gimmick. Yeah. And then you'd say. There it is. Right there. there yeah, go. we're going to get you in the corner and give you the gimmick. Give it could be gimmick. a foreign object. If we were going to pull out a foreign object to use on somebody, we'd say. Give take us out a, the gimmick. Take out the gimmick. It could be like somebody's got, say, uh, a bunch of beers, and you want one, and you could say, hey, "Give me one of those gimmicks." gimmicks exactly. Give me one of your gimmicks. If there's a rat hanging around the bar, yeah, and you know she's a rat, and she, but she's still hanging around, and you kind of have a need. You it's might been say, late. Yeah, I might head out with the gimmick. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So gimmick could mean a lot of things. pretty much anything. Anything in the wrestling world. So to me, I, I use it for like your look or your personality in wrestling, wrestling, or a physical object that's weird. You know, it's a gimmick. It's something odd that attracts attention. I think also anytime you request something that you don't remember the name of, it's a gimmick, right? It's that gimmick. gimmick. Hey, hand me the gimmick. Yeah. yeah, that guy. He's got that gimmick from whatever, right? So yeah. there you go. If folks. I was gonna tell my kids to give me the remote, yeah, but give me the gimmick. Had kids. Give me the TV gimmick. Right? Just be like, give me the gimmick. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, so that's it, folks. That's, that's the gimmick. wrestling word of the day. There you is go. Gimmick. gimmick. Okay, so back, to, so back to Kyle Conquer. So he was this factory, makes all these magic tricks and gimmicks, but he specializes in Halloween masks, right? Yes. Also happens to be a witch. Oddly enough, a, a male witch that's in charge of a giant coven mm -hmm. of witches is called a warlock. Mm -hmm. Coincidental Dick Warlock? Dick Warlock. I don't know. I don't think there's a coincidence. Well, there. he's got this great voice, and he tells this great story about the Feast of Sour. Oh, let's hear it. When the hills ran red with the blood of animals and children. Oh, and duck. Happy Halloween. Creepy as shit. Damn, dude. That Love it. Good. Love that guy. He was a great actor. He was in a lot of stuff before then. If you good. might remember him from the being the head of the company in RoboCop. Dick, I I'm very disappointed. Yeah. Plays Ronnie Cox. As, uh, 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 so my question would be, obviously the masks play a big deal in right? this film. Yep. We see them homaged in Halloween Kills, right? right? Um, of the masks, which we have the witch. Skull and the pumpkin. Even with the wart on her nose. Yeah. The skull and the pumpkin. Yeah. Which were designed for the film. The pumpkin was actually designed specifically for the film. Mm. The witch and the warlock already existed. The skull. Yeah, I'm sorry. The skull. witch and the and skull, skull. Yeah, yeah. already existed. Yeah. Uh, which was your favorite? I, I'm going to go with the witch. I think the witch is cool looking. I've always had this thing about uh, witch 
you know, looking things around Halloween time. Uh, I yeah. think it's cool. I just think it's cool. I'm going like with, black cats too. It's the same. I'm going with the skull. Skull. I like the skull. It reminds me of Johnny from uh, Karate Kid. Oh yeah, you know, kind of like right. yeah. The parka outfits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They should yeah, have had yeah. chairs and just been banging everybody. <laughs> da da da. I probably remember the parka. Yeah, it was good. Dude. Yeah, it was cool, man. Yeah, so I like the witch. We makes all these masks and they got a special little thing on them. Yeah, right. it's that little uh, diode. A little gimmick. Little, gimmick. little gimmick on it, right? And when she pulls out the hair gimmick and she jams yeah, it in the other gimmick, and then her face melts. And then a bunch of bugs, fucking snakes, snakes and bugs and shit. Spiders. Crawl, which we find out is his big plot for Halloween night to get all the kids around the corner on all three major networks to watch this thing that sets it off. It's a blinking pumpkin. Interestingly, at the end of the day, it's, it's bait. What are you doing? Being the blinking pumpkin. Can you stop at some point in time? Okay, I'm done. At the end of the day, we find out it's he really is just trying to pull a prank. Yeah, right. Like he's like the hell of a prank. Greatest prankster. Like what he says about the like stoner. Like Mr. Mixelpick. Remember him? He had to say his name. Wasn't it Mixie's Pitalik? I thought it was Mixelpick. I don't know. I don't think anybody can say it except him. Anyway, this little gimmick. It's got a piece of it from the blue stone from Stonehenge, which is way over in England across the pond. What hinge? Stone. What hinge? Stone. What hinge? Stone. There you go. So that's, a, that's, that's my favorite hinge, by the way. It's my, it happens to be my favorite, too. Of all the hinges in the world, stone's stone my favorite. Stone is the best. So they go, they get, they, they take this blue stone, which is one of the, one of these big tall ones, and they chip it away. And they put these little things in the gimmick, and that's what causes the magic to happen. Yeah. And but nobody knows in the in the movie, they say that it got stolen. They don't know what happened to it. In the movie's like, well, they tell you at the very beginning, they show yeah. on the TV, right? Yeah, yeah, that the, it's the missing. Stonehenge has been missing, stolen, and they don't know. No one there. knows what you wouldn't believe how we did it, how we got it there. So even that's a trick. A good magician never reveals his trick. Never tell. It's it's awesome. Endless. Great movie. So, but here's the other thing now. So here's the other thing. We find out mm -hmm. later on yep. that this chick, mm -hmm. the hot one, is a robot. That Tom Atkins has already. He's already kind of worked her over. He's, you know what he's, I mean? Uh, he's gotten you know, over Interrogated the witness, yeah, so to speak. Right. Yeah, he's, he's, he's definitely punched the munchkin. So, but she turns out to be a robot. So now, was she always a robot? Like, well, was this is this robot banging? Robot fornication. Dream of robot fornication. Dream. Oh, yeah. Uh, anyway, so is it? Who knows? I don't know. I'm gonna assume she. I think what happened is they took her, they whacked her, and then they replaced her with a robot. Now, why they would do that, I don't know. I don't. They did it. I don't care one way or the other. What I want to. The question I want to know. is, was it just as good as a real chick? If he knew oh. she was a robot. Would he have done it anyway? she's hot. Clearly. I mean, she's hot. Yeah. You know the scene where they're trying to discuss him getting another room. and, and Yeah, she's, she's like, where do you well, want to sleep, doctor? Exactly. And he's like, where would you like me to sleep? So-and-so. Yeah. You know, I mean, come on. Yeah. It's Tom Atkins. Again, seriously. How does this guy like get so Fabio, over his sake. skis? Right. And every chick in the world wants him. Probably smells like Tom Atkins. Tom Atkins. Smells, smells like, like scotch and palm oil no filters. Right. That's exactly what he's smells right. like. He's got a beer gut. Man. Yeah. Jealous. Sorry, Tom. You're awesome. You really are. I uh, mean, think dude, about it. I mean, even Tom knows. He, and he should be thanking his lucky oh, stars. I'm sure he does. So back back to the robot fucking. Oh, I mean robot fornication. We'll Sorry. fix that. We'll bleep that and post. That post. We're not gonna uh Lance. We're not um, gonna fix it. Uh if you knew she was a robot. But she's that smoking. And and you wouldn't know that anything else would be robotic. But I knew she was a robot. But you knew she was a robot, mm. but everything else would be the same. Mm. Would you or wouldn't you? Oh, man, that's a tough one. Nah, I wouldn't. What? Nah, I wouldn't feel right about it. You lying ass, you know what? I'm not lying. Well, let me tell you who would. Stone Manson. <laughs> Yeah, I'd do it just because she was a robot. Yeah, you'd be bragging about it. I, on the other hand, would be like, yeah. Or if I did, I'd be like, no, I didn't. Well, hey, to all the robots out there. But I got a guilty conscience and he Look don't. Out. That's the difference. Why would you brothers. be guilty about a robot? 
Because mom said we shouldn't have sex with robots. Don't you remember we were little? Don't you remember on a graduation day from high school? She's like, I'm going to give off, you some. You summer. never graduated from high school. Well, you did, and I was present. You were on that, like, program thing where they just kind of scared Oh, yeah, but I was present. And she was and, like, and, oh, by the way, if you Oh, it's stone. Hold on. Don't hold ever on. have sex with a robot. I think she said, I think she meant to say uh, Robbie instead of robot. But oh, anyway. she didn't care if you had sex with Robbie. She liked him. Robbie was a girl. Oh. Nitwit. Well, who knows? With your alternative lifestyle. Not there's anything wrong with that. You only got through high school because of whom? You. No. Lou Holtz. Coach Holtz. The only reason you even got through. So, you, yeah, by the way, the Coach. Holtz thing. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks. I never did go to through. Notre Dame. So. It's the only reason why I got in the Marines, too. Well, that is true because they yeah. didn't like to take criminal. But... So, interestingly, th this film is also kind of subtitled because. It wasn't originally called Halloween. Well, they, so so uh, Carpenter didn't want to get involved in the third Michael Myers movie. Correct. And they finally acquiesced and went with season this of version of Witch. Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. But they said later on, they called it, they said, we have to call it Halloween 3. Why? Because otherwise nobody will go see it. Which, right. Which caused a lot of problems. I think if they just would have called it Season of the Witch, it would have been a much more successful film. People would have accepted it better. I'm going to disagree with that. So I think that I, I I agree with you when it released that it would have been more successful. Yeah. I think it's it would have been as classic now. now. Oh yeah, is only because it's technically yeah. I I'll I'll agree to that. I think that's yeah. probably true. I think that's probably true, and it is a great film. I I enjoy watching it, you know, yearly. Oh yeah, for sure. I I watched it probably three times this year alone. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Without a doubt. The only thing that gets me is after a while, the song starts bugging me. But that scene at the end when Tom Atkins well, he gets the two... Dun, 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 yeah. Dun, 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 three more, more days to Halloween, Halloween, Halloween. Yeah, that doesn't yeah. Work. right. So at the end, he gets the two networks to shut off the, the commercial, mm -hmm. right? Yep. But he can't get the third one. And his wife, Nancy Loomis, is super pissed at him. Uh, he's not home. He right. doesn't have the kids. He tries to give him those He's other banging a way hotter chick. And Nancy Lewis is good looking. Absolutely. Good looking. We're not kissing awesome. you, Nancy. Real quick, Nancy, got to put you on hold. We got a viewer email we want to get to. Oh. This comes through from Anton. Wow, we haven't had an Anton before. No. I like that name. Is that a boy? Uh, I think. Who knows? Yeah, Doesn't matter. Sure. Anton is from Denton County, Texas. Home of the Von Eric Brothers. The Von Eric family. Deep in the heart of Texas. Woohoo! Uh, of Texas. Carrie Von Eric, dude. I mean, Carrie Von a Eric. physique in the history of professional wrestling? There is not a better physique or a dumber guy, according to people I know. Like yeah. Eli told me one well, time that Carrie said to him, he said, uh, Carrie, uh, now that Fritz is shutting down uh, Dallas, where are you going to go? He's like, oh, I'd like to go somewhere outside of Texas. Like maybe Houston. <laughs> now I think you'll agree. I I've said some dumb things, but that's pretty dumb. If you twist my arm, you can get me to agree with that. Oh, oh, yeah, yes, you have said some dumb things, but in your day, um, today even. I hate to say this about somebody who has passed. Yeah, and he was a nice uh, guy. But I but I I don't feel bad about it because I would have given my eye teeth to look like Carrie. Oh God, he had it made. And man. if I was Carrie, I would have been heavyweight champion of the world. Without question. Uh, Kerry looked like he was not an intelligent individual. Now, I think part of that was was his dependence on the brothers' uh, chemicals. Oh, that too. Actually, um, that made him look kind of like the lights were on, but yeah. nobody was home. Well, what's Anton's yeah. question? Well, okay, sorry, Anton. I uh, didn't mean to hold you out there. So, Season of the Witch, Anton says, was once performed by both uh, Joan Jett, yeah. who we love, uh, and Hole fronted by Courtney Love. Right. Uh, and so Anton asks us today, what are our favorite female-led or all-female bands? That is a great question, dude. And let me tell you something, Anton. Nobody is a champion of women in general, uh, more than me, or women lead singers, women bands, and w hot women badass leads in movies. And we'll get to, that'll be another mm. uh, episode one of these days. Um, uh, I'm gonna, pick. yeah. Uh, I can we pick Hole or Joan Jett or no? No, let's leave them off. Okay. How about I like Babes in Toyland? They're like um, a late, late '80s, early '90s kind of chick metal band. I kind of like. Yeah. Them. 
I'm going to go uh, with my, what are we doing? Like top five? We're just picking. Just whatever. picking a few. Yeah. Um, you send us yours, mansonbrothers.com. Yeah. I'm going to go L7 for one of my. Oh, I like L7. Sure. By the way, and there's a Courtney Love reference because she was the front woman for L7. Courtney Love was? Yeah. Was she? Yep. Well, Andre is one of my favorites. I thought she was. If I'm wrong, please correct me. I would like I to know that if she was. Email I'm pretty us. sure she was. Next how one? about uh, how about uh, the Luna Chicks? Oh, They're yeah. another one. Good They're one. pretty good. Very good. Um, I was going to say Vixen, but they were a little bubblegummy for me. Yeah, but they were all hot. They were. Super hot, man. 80s yeah. hot. Uh, I'm going to go. I'm going to pick this one out of a hat. I think a lot of people are going to disagree, but hear me out on this one. The Go-Go's. And, the and Go-Go's? Let me tell you why. The, those Go-Go chicks were partiers, man. Now, they may have been bubblegummy with their music. I'll tell you. They oh, rock out after shows. I got one so. for two reasons. Let's hear it. Banana Rama, because the three oh. chicks were hot, but two of those chicks went on to do like a weird alt rock band in the early 90s called Shakespeare's Sister, and they totally changed their look. They kind of looked all gothy. Super hot and great album. So wait, you're trying to say that Banana Rama wasn't like a weird alt thing? No, they were kind of bubblegummy poppy, but when they the two they were chicks, alt, they were what weird. And, you, well, and true, alt. but this is more like a gothy '90s alt. It was more. It was way more gothy, and it was called Shakespeare's Sister. If you get a chance, check out the album. You could probably find a video on YouTube. It was really cool. Well, I'm going to give you the number one of all. Well, time, I think that's no contest, uh, and I think Jimmy Page would agree with me. Yeah, I would guess uh, the one and only greatest all female rock band of all time, Joan Jett. Lita Ford, um, fronted by Sherry Curry. Sherry Curry. Uh, the one and only Runaways. The Runaways. The, and they were all like 16 at the, the time. The greatest rock, female rock band of yeah. all time. And one of the best bands of all time, yeah. period. Great band. They were awesome. And they and they sold out coast to coast, all around the world. So Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, if you're watching our show, which you oh, obviously man. are. Yeah, Exactly. Why isn't Joan Jett in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? You we will says. actually set aside our inductions into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Yeah. For Joan Jett and the remainder of the Runaways. Yeah. Uh, to be we'll induct them the even. Yeah. I'd like, I'd like to give the speech. Yeah. Thank you very That's much. That's what I mean. Because you're missing out, punters. Did you say punters? I did say punters. I didn't want to say a bad word. Oh. But anyway. I, I think I think the Anton. Fans out there would appreciate it. There you have it. Fans loosely. I don't know if you're fans or not. You know Um, what? You know what? Before we uh, take it home, mm -hmm. I wanted to mention one other thing about this movie. So in this movie, there's an irritating salesman (laughs) and his family. (laughs) That's where I knew you were going. (laughs) Buddy something or other. And he's another guy that's in other Carpenter films. And so... They use him, him, his kid. Doesn't his kid ride a tricycle around the office? Yeah, it's weird, man. And they use his kid as an experiment to see how the thing works. And they have it in a mock room. But at that time, like, you want it to happen. Like, you you really want to see these family. This but family he can't thing. figure out why they won't take his order for next year. Because there ain't one. There ain't going to be a next year. Halloween. According to Colonel Cochran, there is no next year. There is no next year. No. So, so uh, <laughs> question. I, I, I would ask this question. The end of the film, spoiler alert. All if our you stuff is seen the movie, spoilers. Hit pause, click the subscribe button, check into the other air on the head shows. Then come back. Most importantly, to the this best one, show. Come have a gin and tonic with us. Um, you see him at the end. He shuts down one network. He shuts down the net, next yeah, network. Can't next shut down a you, third one. Well, you don't know. It cuts off. You don't know if it's he does PBS. or doesn't. Yes. Do you think he did, or do you think he didn't? I think he didn't. You think it didn't? Nope. And then what happens? All the kids get their heads squished. Ew. What about the kids who don't have a mask? Then nothing happens to them. Are they getting eaten by bugs and stuff? Probably though? getting bitten by the snakes Snake? that come out of the other bugs. kid's head. Yeah. So which is worse? Turning your head into bugs from the mask or getting bitten by said bugs? that Turning your head to bugs. You might survive the other one. You think? You think yeah. that's the worst? Possibly. Yeah. I don't know. I like to think that he got the other one shut off and somehow... In his Tom Atkinsness, stopped the apocalypse. The apocalypse and the end of the world. Which, by the way, we saved the world. You can watch it right here in the Manson Brothers Midnight Zombie Massacre. One hundred percent. And we're going to do it again, most likely. But we already did it. It's it's kind of again autobiographical, sort of. 
Again, all we got with this was this show. Sort of, except they make me seem like a dummy in it. Uh, I kind of felt like they made you seem smarter. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, thanks, bro. Yeah, it works good on you. Uh, that's our time. We got to take it home. I feel like he saved the world. He feels like it was the end of the world. But regardless, it's the end of this show. And We're going to see you next week. Halloween 3. It's a great movie. Check us out on the Arrow in the Head channel. You can pick up your stuff at mansonbrothers.com, the aforementioned DVDs and Blu-rays, these ducky hats. We got shirts, what has this funny saying on the back. We got pictures. We'll autograph all this crap for you. Whether you like it or not. Mansonbrothers.com. One last thing. I got two words for you. Tom Atkins. See you later, shitty pants. Take it home.